Hiram here. I got a couple of comments from the uh, test that I did the other day with the Trangia and the eye caps, the uh, you know the aluminum corrugated aluminum insert for a pot stand. Uh, Drunken shooter made the comment. It looks like it would be good for melting snow, but you need something to insulate the burner from the cold ground. Yeah, I know. I've been waiting for some snow around here. Got a brand new set of snowshoes that I bought last year and a polk that I made at the end of winter last year. And I've just been waiting for some snow so I could try them out. What do we get? Nothing but rain around here. But anyway, uh, what Drunken Shooter is saying is true. What I always use in the winter is something like this. This is just a piece of corrugated cardboard with that aluminum, sorry about the shine, with the aluminum tape on it works really well. I just make a new one every year. The size depends on what you want. I made it so it's large enough for the Trangia or any of the other stoves. Anyway, it's just corrugated cardboard with aluminum tape on it. So when I have, when I use this the way I always used it before, like this, not only does it insulate from the ground, but the aluminum tape also reflects the heat back up so it's not wasted sucking it into the ground. Real easy to make, just cut yourself a piece of corrugated cardboard to the shape and size you want, make it circular, whatever. This size just happens to fit in the back of my side pack. So that's what I use for the winter. Not so much during the summer, although I guess it might help with that. Also, Bush WP11 made the comment, Hiram, what would happen if you simply plug the center hole in the Trangia wouldn't the blocking, wouldn't blocking the gas from escaping there have the same effect? Interesting idea. Not sure what it'll do. So what I did was, I'm going to first just light this up so we can see what the Trangia looks like when it's just burning on its own. No modifications to it. Again, you just light it up in the center. And let's wait and see when it comes to a bloom. So what I'm going to do today with this is, first I'm going to run this, just showing us what the flames look like, unmodified. And then I'm going to take my first ultralight stove that I had made, turn it upside down, and it fits down in the hole real well with just a little bit of a gap around this, which I don't think will matter. Okay, can you see that? Yep. Some flames there. Now, it looks like flames are coming from the jet and then rising up into the center. But there's no actual flames in the center. There may be vapors coming up through, but it's the jet holes that look like they're burning going up. Now, don't do this. See that? This hasn't gotten hot to the touch yet, so don't try doing this at home. I am an idiot. Or a pyromaniac, whichever. Okay. So that's what it looks like with that. Let me put this out. Okay. Again, I'm just going to take the ultra stove, invert it, and it sticks down in the hole. Now there's like an eighth of an inch gap maybe there. We could still get some fumes coming out, but I don't think that much. Let me see if I can light this again. No, nope, I'm going to have to prime this, I'm sure. Let me just put a little alcohol on this outside ring, which that's what it's for, I believe. Try to get it on here without spilling it everywhere. There we go. This is still warm, so I don't think I need a lot of primer. Okay. Still a primer burning. Okay, there go the jets. 
playing pretty much looks the same. Now I am getting a little bit of huffing here. I think the vapors from inside are lifting the lid just a little bit and then it, it just gives a little huff, puff, whatever. But the flame pretty much looks the same to me. I really don't think we get much interaction from the inside, the inside diameter, except just for preheating the stove and getting it to blossom. All right, what I'm going to do now is, uh, maybe I can do this right in place. I'm going to do the same test as yesterday, or the, the last one, uh, Lab 254, where I had the West Wind stove inverted upside down. Put that on here just like so. I have two cups of water setting at 59 degrees and let's see where this goes. Okay, that kind of caught me short. I was working on the other camera. It looked like that was about 5.15. I'll check back. That's what I get for playing around with the other camera. Hang on. I was kind of fascinated here. This does look like it makes for a different type of flame. I'll look back on the video when I edit this. But uh, ten, uh, right now I'm just going to say it looks like this was about 5.15 to get two cups of water to a boil. In the last test that I did like this, but I didn't have the, uh, the stuffer in there. It was just the unmodified Trangia. It was 6 minutes and 4 seconds to get two cups of water to a boil. Huh, interesting. It kind of looks like the flames are spread out more. Now, on this one, with this tall, it does come back together in the center, but up much higher. When the pot was on there, hopefully you can see on camera too before, the flames were kind of spread out across the whole bottom of the pot. So that cut just a little short of a minute off that, just by stuffing up, possibly stuffing up that center hole on the transia. Now I've seen other people have put carbon felt there. I never played with that, but I, I personally I don't think that does anything by putting the carbon felt, but maybe it does. Maybe that tends to plug up that inner hole of the Trangia and make this burn a little better. Hmm. I wonder what would have happened if I could have... Well, I, I don't think you can totally plug that up. Like I said, there was about an eighth of an inch gap all around this tea light cup. I think if you plugged it up totally, the vapor pressure would, would uh, generate behind it and probably blow it out. This just gives a little bit of release of the vapors. <laughs> so, <clears throat> yeah, I didn't think I could lift that up. Let me see what I can do here. it does seem to spread the flames out somewhat once it heats up okay well I thank Bush W Bush WP 11 for this idea suggestion I thank drunken shooter for his comment about the insulator pad that I use and this is a good thing to use in the winter uh, I never really used it much in the summer, but I think it's a good thing to use. It saves you some fuel and it weighs practically nothing. So also with this insert in here, it can be put out with the simmering because it, it fits in there just right. So anyway, I thank Bush, WP11, and Drunken Shooter for their comments. I thank you for watching my videos. 
I look forward to your input, your questions, remarks, helpful suggestions like this. And as always, watch for my buddy Max. Bye now. No, you've been a good friend. And that's in the second thing.